Happy Friday, everybody. How about a bonus episode? <laughs> it's a short little episode just because I love you. And I've been riding my motorcycle and I feel kind of good. I feel like a dog with his head out the window. And I think I know the secret. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> What's up, good people? This week, I got a chance to ride my new Indian Challenger, and uh, it was good times. I put about 300 miles on it this week, putting around the area. A friend of mine came up from Southern Maryland, showed me some back roads that I didn't even know were there, and man, I am learning to love motorcycling all over again. You know, I saw a dog with his head stuck out the window. You know how dogs are, just be chilling. Well, I watched this dog for a minute, and I realized something. There's a secret that nobody's paid any attention to. We're probably the only people that know about this secret. The wind and the smells. You know, as you ride, sometimes you don't. Take it, you just take things for granted that the sights, the sounds, and the smells are there. Did you know that your nose can tell the difference between a trillion different scents? And a dog's sense of smell is way stronger than ours. Yeah, when it comes down to nose sensitivity, dogs are the paws down winners over humans. Numbers abound about how much better a dog's nose or their sense of smell is than ours. And there's so many variables that it's almost impossible to quantify. If you do some research, you'll see that the figures indicate that a dog's sense of smell is from 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 1 million times better. Dogs can detect odors at concentrations of parts per trillion. So, why does that dog... Stick their head out the window because they can, because they choose to. They want the wind therapy too. They do something that it just feels good. And they can get an explosion of smells. That's your dog's secret joy. Don't have a dog? You're a cat person? Well, forget all that then. The next time you ride. See how many different scents you can detect. When I was riding through the countryside of Maryland, I got the diesel and the gasoline and the cornfields and hay, mowed grass, swamp, stagnated water, flowers and the weeds, trees and the pollen, tar, burnt plastic, burnt rubber, perfume from some bimbo they went by, smelt weed, marijuana I'm talking about, cigarettes, different types. Some was like nasty. I smelled a few cigars, smelled salt water, smelled roadkill, smelled dead and decayed animals in the woods. I smelled dirt, smelled burnt coffee, smelled fast food. I smelled barbecue, and I particularly like smelling beef when I'm riding by. That is a different smell altogether. That cooked meat, oh, that's a good smell. Now, it was close to 100 degrees the three days that I was riding. And I had to get acclimated to the heat because I've been riding in my big old Cadillac with the air conditioner. I got a big old preacher car. That thing is huge. It's like one of the last years that the big big Cadillacs came out. I went looking for it on purpose. Some people think it looked like a hearse, but I like it for the power. But now that I'm out of my caddy and I'm back on two wheels, I got to tell you, I am so happy. But you know what I'm talking about. So right now, I'm learning all about this Challenger. And that includes that big dashboard, the big ride command. Now, if you don't have a radio, please don't hate on me because I do. You know we're all a little bit different. Well, I'm still trying to figure this thing out. And I had the music cranking on an 80s station. You know, 80s music, synthesized music. Music that you can dance to. I ain't got no shame in my game. I remember when Footloose came out by Kenny Loggins and Thriller by Michael Jackson. And I want to dance with somebody 
from Whitney Houston. I remember when it came out the first time. Living on a prayer. Pour some sugar on me, baby. Jesse's girl. Bust a move. Sweet child of mine. Red, red wine. We sang that song until people got sick of it. And then Prince cranked it a couple times with Purple Rain and Kiss. I jammed on Billy Idol down this highway. Oh, do you feel me? Felt like a super freak. But that was on the first two days. The third day, when I rode through the countryside, I cut everything off. And I just got in tune with the motor. I was practicing my shifting and downshifting and listening to the sounds outside and the smells, still smelling the smells. But I was really getting in tune with the motor. I'm still in my break-in period. I can tell when the shift was coming and I was learning the sound of it so that I didn't have to look at the tachometer. I was looking and feeling how the bike rides. It's important. I got a chance to ride with a buddy and uh, we even did the chips thing for a minute. I remember... Uh, a couple of turns that we made coming out of stop signs and lights that I kept up with them on the side. And I thought, yeah, I still got it. This bike has the best suspension I've ever had. I've hit a couple of um, railroad tracks and a couple of potholes, and it felt like my Cadillac. Yeah, it did. Unlike my Harley, my Harley, I had an 05 electric glide standard, and everything was, in comparison, analog and digital. You hit a bump, ka-chunk. You change your gear, click. Yeah, everything. And even when you change gears, ka-chunk. It was a lot different. And I remember hurting my back a couple of times on some rough pavement just because the gravel and the street was bad. All that shock went right up my lower back. At the time, I had some issues, just stress-related and the bike was making it worse. So this time I went and bought one of those big old pads you wear if you got an iron butt or you want to travel with the air suspension, little pads you put on there under your seat. Man, I feel spoiled right now. Yeah, I know. Make fun of me if you want to. But my butt is happy. And if your butt is happy, the rest of you might be happy as well. And I've been buying crap like nobody's been to see that I got like some cool tennis shoes that are... um. Riding, riding boots. I got uh, a jacket, which is way too heavy for now. It came with a liner, so I have to save that thing. I've been wearing it and sweating, so I had to go back to a, a mesh jacket, and I just ordered something else for the summertime. I got gloves that are so new, they're tight, and they're almost too tight. So I want to see if I can get, break in some of this stuff and let it loosen up a little bit, or... I'll be switching some gear. I got an Indian open face three-quarter helmet that's all right for now, but I'm thinking I'm going to buy a nice full face here shortly. I want the protection, if not for the, the bugs, but for the rain as well. I just bought a really nice wetsuit or riding suit for when it rains, two-piece with a bib, and I'm looking forward to uh, making it my first big trip in a storm, which has been plenty of lately with all these hurricanes. But I'm also planning to be a commuter back and forth to work, which is about a 45 minute to an hour ride one way. So I'm going to be hooked up, dressed up and uh, comfortable from home to work and back until it snows or it gets real icy. We're going to try, see how long I can do. Yeah, I haven't done that since high school. In high school, I commuted probably about the same distance on a 350 Honda and didn't have any Gore-Tex or fancy gear back then. It was a jumpsuit snowmobile outfit that I was still frozen until second period most of the time. Hyperthermia, I didn't even know what that was, but I had probably had it a couple of times. I was cool, though. 16 with a motorcycle. Let's see, that was... Uh, 1978, yeah, I've been riding a motorcycle since 1978. Right now, my biggest worry is when I get back to work, we wear a shirt and tie in my office. So I'm trying to figure out how do I pre-position myself or how do I pack with a little suit every day so that I can uh, change in the bathroom like Superman for the corporate world, you know. 
for the few more years that I am working. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, last week I threw a leg over and I was rolling the bike outside the garage and I was getting ready to go visit my wife. She's She's been back in the hospital for a week. It's been almost two now, but um, she had a setback, but she's doing really, really well. And I hope to see her in a couple more days back at home. Um, I was going to the visitor and the bike wouldn't start. Freaked out. I thought, come on. I got less than 100 miles on this thing. What happened? What's wrong? Is it what they say about, you know, Indian challengers, blah, blah, blah. I was like reading all the stuff on the the different Facebook pages of everybody who's mad and disgruntled. But I said, no, it's just my turn to get beat up right now. So I went up to the dealership and they said, "Uh, yeah, we're swamped. Uh, We probably won't be able to get to it until October. And in my heart, I was about to go all predator on everybody, but then I thought, no. How about I just tow it up here and uh, you guys sort it out? And that's what happened. I got the uh, tow company off the desk. I called a guy on my way home. He met me at my house. He towed the bike up there. And within a few days, no, the next day, actually, I called the owner and uh, told him what was going on. And he said, dude, all you had to do was call me. That was the right thing to say. He made me feel better. And we talked about my wife and her condition and her improvement. And he goes, I'll see what I can do in the back room. Well, I learned that my battery had died. And when your battery dies on a bike full of electronics, everything goes wonky. The key gets disengaged. The computer gets all messed up. So after they charged my battery, it was good to go. Had to get a battery tender for if you're going to keep it or not ride it every for like four weeks or more. You're supposed to put a battery tender. I learned that. And uh, it's been on like popcorn ever since. Do I feel dumb that I didn't ride my bike, you know, the first two weeks I had it? Not really, because I was tending to the wife. And after she comes home and we get back into a rhythm, I'll ride in the evenings, and then when I go back to work, I'll be the commuter. But everything has its place. I changed the settings on our Facebook page, so now we have about 350-some people on there. But I think it might also just be the Facebook algorithm, or it could be having Teresa Uncaged on the show. Next week, like come Monday, she'll be talking about women in motorcycle history. That's what's coming up next on your favorite Righteous podcast, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Now, I've been riding for a long time, but there's a whole bunch of stuff I don't know. So if you want to share a tip with your friend and your brother from another mother, if you want to give me some insight to some stuff that I should know, don't be shy. Don't think I know it all, because I know I don't. I got so much going on in my little brain, it ain't funny. And I could use your help, your suggestion, your tip. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast. You can do so financially as well on buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. And you can find the link in the show notes. The work here is done. I'm needed elsewhere now. I'm needed wherever outlaws rule the West, wherever innocent women and children are afraid to walk the streets, wherever a man cannot live in simple dignity, and wherever a people cry out for justice. All right, you caught me. Speak the plain truth. It's getting pretty damn dull around here. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to your favorite righteous podcast, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Now may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Kick stands up. Let's ride. Let's ride.